uh, community meeting. We've been covering this every night at 4 o'clock out at San Marcos High School, so we're waiting on that. Uh, in the meantime, you're going to show us the map and some of the where, the where the fire is. That's right. We understand that the the flames are marching west, as they have been doing, a half mile to a ma mile each day. Now, heading into the old burn zone of the Tea Fire, which burned in 2008. You can see that to the far left of your, um, your screen there. Also, moving to the northwest to the old uh, strip at the bottom there of the Zaka fire, which broke out in 2007. And this is uh, quickly becoming, going to become the third largest fire. And it's probably going to surpass that in a second. And I think everybody believes, considering where it's burning way out there in the wilderness, that um, it's probably going to chew up a lot more acreage and probably become the number one fire in California's history. That's right. We are about to get new numbers, of course, when they um, start this community meeting. But at last count, 252,500 acres. The uh, containment stands at 35% contained. We've seen so much that's burned. It's incredible when you do that drive up the coast and you can see from the different vantage points just the white, ash white capped mountains all in our uh, back country and our front country, really. Um, and how much more there is to burn? There's a lot of available fuels, and the big concern, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about now for pretty much the week, is uh, if the winds come, and now when they come, and how strong they'll be, and uh, it's looking a lot more certain. I think the timing's been pushed back a little bit, so not so concerned about tonight. I'm more concerned about Saturday through Saturday night. Now looks to be the strongest period of wind. Now the window they're talking about, it's a pretty big window. Does it sound like this could be a wind event that would cover most of that window, or just be sporadic? I that's mean, a good question. Is it, is that's what can happen with that's the sundowners. That's a good sundowners. question. Yeah, you know, typically sundowners are opposite of Santa Ana. Sundowners are typically strongest late afternoon through the evening and into the start of the overnight hours, whereas Santa Ana's are sort of 12 hours shifted later, mostly morning to afternoon for the Santa Ana. So for the forecast here, I think they will pick up some overnight tonight, but probably strongest tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. Uh, and because of the strengthening onshore winds or offshore winds, the big concern here is uh, the fire. Could it be spotting? Could it be spreading those flames and growing that fire back towards the populated areas of the south coast, in particular Montecito and Santa Barbara now with gust to 35 miles per hour? That could be a possibility. Uh, just depends how active the fire is and where it's burning and how much work these brave men and women have done, how many perimeters and how many backburns they've done to sort of set a safe space around uh, the areas uh, closest to the foothills. Right now, the Montecito Hills, it's actually seeing a little bit of an onshore wind still coming out of the southwest at 6, gusting to 11. Uh, Santa Barbara Botanic Gardens winds here also out of the west-southwest. At 7, gusting to 13, humidity there at 13%. And for Wiley Ridge, which saw plenty of Santa Ana's yesterday, even last night, Finally seeing some breaks from that, but it doesn't last long. The red flag warning is in effect for Santa Barbara County from 2 a.m. to, I believe that should say 10 p.m. Saturday. I apologize for that. That's a typo. So 2 a.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday for Ventura County, 1 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday. Because of those gusty offshore winds and the low relative humidity, the fire weather danger uh, does ramp back up. And in speaking of ramping up, the winds here, you can see on the Futurecast product, it will be breezy at times tonight around the south coast, but overall, it's not going to stay consistent. See how it sort of backs off a bit uh, during the overnight hours and sort of picks up again. So maybe a little bit of an ebb and flow, but look at the morning hours on Saturday. See the blue out there in the mountains? That lets us know that this frontal system is moving through the area and that more widespread wind will follow that. So I think by Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon and then Saturday night, uh, winds will be picking up. Not so sure the model has this handled 100% correctly. Those numbers seem a little bit high to me, but um, I mean, it's possible. We could see gust in that range, certainly, and sustained winds 15 to 25 for several hours. That could certainly oh, cause some problems. Not what could. we need, that's no, for sure. definitely not. Yeah, and we know that this uh, fire has already taken two lives. Yeah, sadly, uh, the first life uh, that was taken was um, the night the fire broke out, I think December 4th. Uh, Monday night about 6.30. Uh, we're looking at the firefighter who died yesterday. Alan was talking about how active it's been around the Fillmore area. Uh, Corey Iverson died. Uh, we're getting some more information about what happened. Um, apparently they were doing a backfire, a controlled burn basically. They just got out of control. They're talking about how the fuel was so dry and thick in areas. And then uh, the, apparently the backfire started acting like a head fire and made a big run. Uh, the crews there reported 40 to 50 foot flame lengths. Um, 
obviously the cause of invest uh, the cause of death is still under invest in, under investigation at this point uh, but that we're starting to learn more about Corey Iverson and and how he died yesterday that's right <coughs> excuse me and the 70 year old woman Virginia Pasola who died that first night uh, in Wheeler Canyon Road was an LA attorney and an English teacher we understand the community meeting is getting underway let's listen in now My name is Chris Harvey. I'm with the uh, Sacramento Fire Department here uh, with Unified Command Team as uh, one of the public information officers. Thanks again for being with us tonight. Uh, first off, I'd like to start by uh, introducing Simone from uh, Just Communities to talk a little bit about our Spanish language translations tonight. Hola, me llamo Simone y yo y Marla vamos a estar ofreciendo um, interpretación simultánea del inglés al español ahí adelante del auditorio. Hi, my name is Simone. Marla and I will be offering simultaneous interpretation from English to Spanish available at the front of the auditorium. Unas guías cuando trabajando con intérprete. A few guidelines when working with an interpreter. Por favor, te pedimos que hablan uh, un paso madurado. Si necesitamos que hablan más lento o despacio, voy a estar haciendo esta señal. Um, we ask, first of all, that you speak at a moderate pace. If we need you to slow down, we will make this signal. También pedimos que hablan en voz fuerte y clara. Si necesitamos que hablan más fuerte, voy a hacer esta señal. We also ask that you speak uh, loud and clear. If we need you to be louder, I will make this signal. Uh, muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd also like to take a second before we start to uh, once again acknowledge the hard work of Joe Black, our ASL uh, interpreter who's been here with us all week. So thanks again, Joe. Uh, last night at this meeting we had to sh shorten uh, up a little bit and so we changed uh, the format. Tonight we have a little bit more time. We'll return to a little bit more traditional format. Uh, we will take some questions from the audience with a microphone, try and get your questions answered in that respect and then again we can break into our face-to-face one-on-one -one groups after the meeting, either down here in front of the stage or in the lobby and we'll make sure you get all your questions answered before you leave. Uh, yesterday was a hard day for us. Um, as one of my colleagues mentioned earlier from the stage earlier this week, uh, my patch says Sacramento Fire Department on the side, but when we're down here, um, we all consider ourselves your fire department, the communities of Santa Barbara County and Ventura County. And when we lose one of our firefighters, it affects us all, uh, even if their patch is different from ours. So. I'd just like to take a moment, if we can, please just have a moment of silence for Cal Fire Engineer Corey Iverson, who lost his life yesterday battling this fire from the Cal Fire San Diego unit. If we could just take a moment, please. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to start tonight with an uh, operations update from uh, Unified Command, one of our incident commanders, Rocky Oplager. Uh, first of all, um, good afternoon. My voice probably sounds a little raspy. That's just, I think, the number of calls and meetings that we've had. Uh, it's always a difficult time when we lose one of our, our firefighters, one of our family members. Uh, this morning we did the operational brief in Ventura and I did the closing brief in uh, Lake Kachuma for the uh, Santa Barbara zone. And well, it's a tremendous loss and all of us carry that, the hearts and feelings towards the family and Corey's family and CAL FIRE, uh, you know, losing one of theirs, but it is a loss within the fire and emergency services. So certainly our folks, uh, we pay that respect, um, but we've got a job to do. Uh, the focus today is where the fire is, and we're going to talk about the operational date, but the fire currently is at 252,500 acres. Uh, it's about 3,800 acres from being the third largest fire in California history. Uh, we personally right now have 8,369 personnel assigned. Uh, we've dropped 733,000 gallons of retardant to date, and a combination of water just over 4 million gallons. Um, we're at 35% containment. 
Um, so we're going to talk about what happened today with uh, Chief uh, Childers. Uh, folks have done a great job. The most difficult part of the fire is always those last uh, difficult acres that you're trying to get. Uh, the folks have done a tremendous job uh, when the fire made its advances in um, Ventura County. And as it came into Santa Barbara County, Carpinteria, and now, of course, that immediate threat to Montecito and Santa Barbara City, uh, the folks are in there just doing an incredible job. And I had a chance to meet with those crews that are physically on the line, cutting that line, those engine crews that are supporting that operation. And I don't think you could find a better, a greater support uh, to the community than what we have right now that's on this fire. So I'd like to bring up uh, Chief Childers. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Rocky. It's always tough to follow the rock star. He would have probably been funny on a better situation. But let's talk about what's happening today. Can, can you, by chance, give me the operational map? That will work. OK. And you're going to show the, if I put my dot right there, OK. Hopefully at home we can see that that's the leading edge of the fire and it is right in San Ysidro Creek. Our direct attack is working. We have gotten into that creek, it has not crossed it. We have aircraft hitting it really hard right now and we have the direct line at least getting into that creek and trying to wrap around it and get an underslung line underneath it so we can start heading up the hill towards the Camino Cielo. I told you last night, this is some terribly difficult, challenging country, and whether or not we can hold it in there, especially in face of this morning's wind event uh, reports, we're not sure if we can. But let me give you continue the overview, and then I'll come back to that point. We're working really well right there. This whole part back here is getting, this is our county line right here, mopped up and put out. We have some work to do here, and still in the, into Montecito, and we have some work right there. When we hold this tonight, we hold this tomorrow, we're going to be looking pretty good. And I'm optimistic, I always am, but I'm not going to tell you any lies and tell you we got it out. There's a wind event expected tonight at 5, 4 a.m. and maybe through noon tomorrow, and if it hits as hard as they hit, say it's going to hit, with the fuels as dry as they are, we just saw today at fire briefing that the fuels are drier. The energy release component is higher than it's ever been in the history of recordings of the fire history of Santa Barbara County and Santa Barbara Ranger District of the Los Padres. That's time for us to be alert, and we have firefighters being alert. At 1800 tonight, we're going to have a tactical stand down, so all of the firefighters are reminded of the safety and their need to remember this energy release component and the threat, and they'll watch for those winds. Now, can we say? We comp but let me say confidently that we're not just giving up on this and we're not giving the fight. The direct attack is working well, right, where the hand is on the fire screen. In addition to that, we have hundreds of fire engines parked at and near these houses, right along here, all of the homes above Cathedral, uh, Highway 192, where it turns into Cathedral Oaks, but all the way over Foothill Drive, and all of the roads above that, we have hundreds of engines waiting in there, over 100 engines. Now we have 100 more in staging down at the polo grounds. And we even went so far as we have the phone numbers of the people that are sleeping tonight and are down tonight and supposed to be off duty just in case our lines don't hold and a firestorm comes into town. We have more people coming in there than you can imagine, and it's going to be a massive firefight, and we're ready for it. Now... That's the worst case scenario. The best case scenario is these winds are only going to be a pressure gradient of five. Maybe they don't hit so hard and maybe we hold with direct line. So there's the two sides of it. Does that help? Okay. My optimism says I want to tell you the great things, but I remember a joke from Mark Twain who said, he's different and I'm different than George Washington. George Washington could not tell an eye. I can tell a lie, I just don't do it. So if you have any questions, come and see me afterwards, okay? That's where we are with this. Is got a good overview. Everybody's comfortable. I mean, not comfortable, but you're understanding. <laughs> so 
hopefully I've explained it well enough. And let me just finish off my explanation. So that's our front country. This is our big, the next 24 hours, I'll either, if I'm not here tomorrow night, you'll know why, right? Uh, you'll know where I'll be out here. But as long as this goes decently, this is going really well. Into the San Inez River, and then up to the Zaca fire. That line is progressing well. The little firing back here is going well. And uh, we should have this back country hopefully tied in by in the next day or two. All right? Again, I'll be here for questions afterwards. Good evening. My name is Brendan Ripley, and I'm a fire behavior analyst with the Ventura County Fire Department. Uh, just to kind of build on what uh, both chiefs have presented to you, a little bit more explanation on what's going on and why there is the threat to the community as we come into this next 24 hours. Uh, the northwest winds that push into this area here, uh, it introduces wind from a, a different standpoint than what we've had over the past basically 12 days of red flag warning. Uh, that red flag expired this morning at 10 o'clock, but they reissued another red flag warning for the Santa Barbara coast beginning at 2 a.m. through 10 p.m. tomorrow. And that's that window that they feel those winds will affect this front coastline. The winds line up with the drainages along the San Inez Mountain, and where the fire is poised up there, it could mix down into the area of the front country. And that's why we've prepared for the worst, but hoping for the best. One of the issues that we have is this wind event is a little bit different because there's a, a component to it called cold air. And cold air wants to sink. And there's upper level winds that are blowing the same direction as the surface winds, and those want to push down. The countering factor that we have is the marine coast the marine influence that sits here. So as the onset of the winds begin, and it can be as early as this evening, but it doesn't meet the criteria of red flag, it will be light offshore, which will help to scour out some of the smoke that you've been plagued with. And then as we moved into the early morning hours, those winds will peak in intensity and grow throughout the morning hours and then diminish through tomorrow, and 10 p.m., we'll see where we end up and where the fire ends up. Our hope is, is that marine influence will hold and keep those winds from mixing down into that front country where the population is. That is our hope, and that's what we're looking forward to, hopefully. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that may not occur. Uh, later on tomorrow afternoon, that marine influence may break down and be pushed out by those winds, and they could mix down into that front country in which they've prepared. Looking further into Sunday, <clears throat> we'll lose the wind in this front coast here, but I want to also let you know that you may be impacted by smoke again uh, and ash fallout. Uh, we have a strong to moderate, actually a moderate Santa Ana wind that's forecasted for Sunday. And again, that cold air and those upper level wind supports will bring some increased winds to the back country here where the fire continues to burn through the vegetation that has that old growth or that non-fire history. And what happens is winds, when we talk about them coming out of the northeast, it's where the winds originate from. And they blow in this southwest manner. And as the fire intensifies, yesterday it made a 1,500-acre run, and it backed into the wind. And from a fire behavior standpoint, it is um, astounding to see that type of fire behavior. Normally, you would get that fire growth blowing in concert or in the same direction with wind, but it backed into the wind, and that is what kicked up a lot of the smoke and impacted the Santa Barbara area. As we move on into Monday and Tuesday, we lose the intensity of those winds, but we will remain offshore under a light Santa Ana condition. So just to kind of give you an idea of what can unfold over the weekend, 
Uh, tomorrow night at 10 o'clock is a benchmark to see where we're at on the front coast as we look at the impacts from fire. And then as we move into Sunday, there will be some more issues in regards to uh, smoke and possible smoke impacts to the Santa Barbara area. As we also assimilate those northwest winds, if you live down in Montecito, uh, this area here, um, it's direct line with the northwest winds coming in here, where you may have been clear over the next 24 hours, you may be impacted by smoke again. And that could mix down all the way into the Ventura area. So we just want to make sure that you have an idea that you don't wake up in the morning and go, oh, here we go again. If you live in some of the areas that have already been impacted by fire, we just want to make sure that you're understanding what is transpiring and how that smoke may be traveling through the coastal area. I'll also be here for questions if you have anything. Thank you. Hello, I'm Ben Ellenberger with the Santa Barbara County Air Pollution Control District. Um, I'll just follow up with a little bit more about uh, the air quality we saw today and what we're expecting tomorrow and then on, on through the week. Um, let's see, is this, so this was the forecast from today and, and today's conditions um, were a little bit better than they've been through the week. Uh, it was still unhealthy for sensitive groups uh, into Santa Inez and on the south coast um, and getting worse as you get further east to uh, Carpinteria, where it's unhealthy. Um, and what we're expecting for tomorrow is, as you heard, the, uh, the winds could improve air quality, especially in the northern part of the county tomorrow, um, and, and possibly improve in Goleta and Santa Barbara. Um, but we, we're still expecting, as you get further east, uh, air quality will be worse and unhealthy in Carpinteria. Um, all of this is very uncertain and conditions can change. Um, so we're cautioning people and recommending that people uh, visit our worth website, ouraire.org. Um, and we're posting current air quality to, to the site. Um, and also we have uh, notices and these maps and forecasts uh, in both English and Spanish. Um, and we're also cautioning people um, even though general air quality may be good in an area, especially as the wind picks up, to be cautious about ash getting kicked back up um, and being exposed that way. Thank you. Afternoon, my name is Tom Fayram. I'm with the Santa Barbara County Public Works Department with the Flood Control District. Uh, just a brief update, we've been talking about as the fire um, starts to uh, move to the east and areas, I'm sorry, to the west and areas on the east become accessible that our uh, forces will start moving in to uh, prep debris bases, basins that we have in place. Uh, I had earlier reported that we would be starting that work today. However, out of um, error for caution and safety, that work will now start on Monday. But uh, as we've gotten briefed in our EOC, um, either fortunately or unfortunately, uh, there's no rain on the horizon, so we will, we will be able to get our work done in time. So um, we'll be starting in earnest next week to get all that work done. I would remind folks, as you are allowed back into your homes, to assess your individual uh, properties and know there's a homeowner's guide to flood prevention and response on our website countyofsb.org slash pwd and then that'll link you to all of the flood control resources and I'll be available for any questions about any of our work um, after the end here thank you Hi, I'm Jennifer Adame. I'm a community outreach coordinator for Santa Barbara County Animal Services. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that our hotline is still active, 805-681-4332. 
We are still accepting evacuated animals and can assist with evacuations. Um, and the other question we've been getting a lot is there are a lot of properties and people who were not able to evacuate their animals. It wasn't feasible for one reason or another. Sometimes there's large aviaries or other things like that. Um, we are available if law enforcement and fire personnel tell us it's safe to go in and feed and water these animals. If this is something that is a service that you need, please call our hotline and um, we can hopefully arrange that for you. Thank you. The hotline number is 805-681-4332. Thanks. Good evening. I'm Cindy Ponce. I'm the captain with the California Highway Patrol here in Santa Barbara. We want to thank the public for their continued patience and support as we have to close the 154 in the mornings. Uh, we do ask that you use the 101 as an alternate route all hours of the day if possible because the, the 154 will have extended delays all hours of the day. We have received reports that uh, there have been near head-on collisions as impatient motorists have tried to pass long lines of fire equipment. Please don't do that. Um, that's, we don't want another collision um, to happen with our fire personnel or with the public where someone gets hurt. So please, please continue to be patient and avoid the 154 if you can. Also, we still have 20 fixed posts along the 192 and our officers are under the direction to not allow anyone in. So please don't argue with the officers. Just do what you're told. They're simply trying to keep you all safe. And I would be remiss if I did not thank our dispatchers who are behind the scenes all day long taking 911 calls, trying to keep account of all the officers that we have out there and they've been doing an excellent job, so I want to thank them. And I just ask for your continued support and prayers for our um, first responders out there fighting this fire and just continued support for them. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sheriff Bill Brown. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit about evacuations and some changes that occurred today and what to anticipate uh, this evening and tomorrow. First of all, today at about midday, the evacuation order for uh, what we're, we call Carpinteria 5 and 6, and if we can get this map, we can, where's the pointer here, I'll show you, in the uh, areas right here. These areas here, five and six, uh, they remain in uh, evacuation, mandatory evacuation order. However, we are allowing residents, uh, residents only, to go in and out of that area to their homes. They may require an escort, but we are allowing people to go back in there. The evacuation warning for the areas in Carpinteria below that, right in this area here, from... Um, south of 192, north of 101, east of Casitas Pass, and west of Rincon Point, including Rincon Point, those warnings have been lifted. So that's the good news. Um, the other news, not necessarily bad news, but the other news is that all the other evacuation, mandatory and warning uh, areas remain in effect. You heard um, that the fire services have made significant progress today and in the last several days on the fire but there is a major concern about the potential for a wind event that could occur as early as late this evening or early this morning through tomorrow morning so in particular i want to re-emphasize that anyone who is in the evacuation warning area uh, which currently is from mission canyon right here, and everything east of Mission Canyon that is above Highway 192. 
If you're in this area, that is, that is evacuated. If you're in this area below it, this is evac evacuation warning area right up to about here. And these areas in particular over the next 24 hours need to be very, if you live in that area, you should be very vigilant because if this fire was to break through, the likelihood is that it would come down into the area, into the Riviera area potentially. And so if you live in this area, which is kind of the interface between Montecito and Santa Barbara, all the way down through the uh, 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 Hot Springs Road area here and all the way down into um, Coast Village Road area, just above 101, if you're in that area, you should be prepared to evacuate. And we don't want you to get panicked, but we want you to be prepared. If you live in that area, you should right now, if you haven't done it already, be assessing uh, if there are some irreplaceable things in your home that you can take with you, that you can pack and have ready to go at a moment's notice. Um, and, and we're talking about photographs, small heirlooms, things that are irreplaceable. Um, if you get an evacuation warning, uh, be cognizant, I'm sorry, if you get an evacuation order, a mandatory evacuation order, please evacuate that area immediately. You need to be able to go in a moment's notice. And you need to have a plan. You need to have a plan of where you and your family are going to go. And think of that ahead of time. You can go, obviously, to friends or relatives' home, have a plan to do that. There is also the evacuation uh, shelter, which is available at UCSB. So you need to be ready to go. You need to have an idea of where you're going to go if that occurs. And I want to just conclude by... Uh, for the last several days, we've focused on uh, people who have been, obviously, the frontline firefighters and, and law enforcement officers who've been out there um, are getting a lot of thanks and recognition. But there's a lot of other people who are behind the scenes or, or not getting a lot of that recognition as well. You've heard about the dispatchers. Uh, we've talked about the staff who work in our emergency operations centers and are providing a lot of information and keeping our websites open and so forth. So I want to make sure that we recognize and thank them as well. And in particular tonight, I want to recognize and thank our search and rescue team members. They are directly involved whenever we have an evacuation. They've already helped us evacuate these areas that have already been evacuated. And if we have to do any further evacuations, they will be integrally involved in that as well and have a plan in all of these areas. You can see these evacuation zones. They're all broken down into smaller sub-areas as to where team members are going to go and who's going to work in what areas to evacuate. So uh, I just want to give them a shout out tonight and a thank you for what they do, not only in this fire event, but also uh, throughout the year and, and all the time. They're, they're a tremendous group of men and women. And then lastly, I just want to indicate one more time that uh, this fire is not going to be something that's going to be finished in a day or two. It's going to be a long uh, battle to, to get this over with. We have to be understanding of that and prepared for that. But recognize that we've been through these before, and we will get through this one as well. You've got the best fire service people in the world who are working on doing the best they can to put this out, and they're supported by a, a, a huge army of professionals who are equally excellent at what they do as well. And I just want to say thank you to all of you for the support that you continue to provide to all of us. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Vicki Collins, and I'm here on behalf of Agency Administrator Pancho Smith, who is the District Ranger for Santa Barbara and Ojai Ranger Districts. Once again, Pancho extends his appreciation to all the agencies, cooperators, and the community as we work together to get through this event. I thought at this point in time when about half of the acres of the fire are on National Forest lands, you might be interested to know that part of the staffing of the fire includes resource advisors and BEAR team members, that's the Burned Area Emergency Response Team. Our job is to work with the uh, situation group, the planning group, the operations group, and the command staff in order to protect the resources that make the Los Padres so special. These include threatened and endangered species, cultural resources, those areas of tribal concerns, and specially designated areas such as wilderness, wild and scenic river, 
and uh, wildlife refuges and many others. In addition, the forest is host to much of the infrastructure that helps support the front country and coastal communities, including the utility lines, communication sites, uh, roads, water systems, and so on. Any of those facilities that are damaged during this event, we will work hand in hand with you to help get them repaired and up and running as soon as we can. Thank you so much. Okay, we're just about done. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions here in a moment. But before we do, I just wanted to echo the words of our sheriff and our CHP officer tonight. Uh, the firefighters and law enforcement personnel assigned to this incident uh, often get a lot of thanks and public recognition, but there is a small army of logistical and support personnel that allow uh, those people to do their jobs, mechanics, uh, fuel stations, cooks, uh, janitorial service, uh, basically people that help the base camp run and allow the firefighters to do their job. So I want to make sure that they get some recognition. In particular, uh, the California Conservation Corps. Uh, the CCC comes out to our fire camps, and these young people work very long hours for very low pay, and I can say that because it's their motto. Uh, and we're very grateful for the fact that they support us. So with that, let's go ahead and open it up to a few questions from the audience, some general questions, and then we can break out into our small groups if you have more specific questions for our subject matter experts. Anybody from the audience? Sir in the white hat? Yes, sir. Oh, here comes a microphone behind you. So, so would it be correct to say that there's been no uh, large-scale uh, backfiring today on that western edge? Chief Childers, are you still here? That's correct? Yeah, there's been no large-scale backfiring operations today. Ma'am? So the pink ribbon we call flagging, and it's just for our crews to use as, as uh, points of reference when they are navigating through the, through the neighborhoods. Uh, it's generally a place that we need to turn. Uh, sometimes that flagging is also used to mark hazards, like large trees that may fall. But if it's tied to your mailbox, I'm sure it's just a, a place for them to turn. Are you at the, uh, is it at the base of a long driveway or an access road? Okay, so that's probably denoting a place for, for access for our crews. Anybody else? Sir? I have a question about the air quality maps. Um, it seems to imply that that uh, entire region, and when it's broken down, is being forecast by one reporting location. Is that true, or are there recording locations all around within a border that's up there? Uh, each one of those regions represents one monitoring station. Um, so yeah, we do want to caution people that that station reads at that location, but it can vary throughout that region. Um, so pe yeah, so people should look at the, their local conditions, what they're seeing, and also how they're feeling. How they're feeling. Let's take one more question from the audience, and then we'll go ahead and end the meeting and break up into small groups. Anybody else? All right, that's good. It means our questions are being answered. Is there one more? Oh, here we go, right in front. Uh, what's the schedule for these over the weekend? So as far as I know at this time, we're still planning on having another meeting here at 4 p.m. tomorrow, uh, but we will put out a press release first thing in the morning if that changes. Um, we uh, did secure the use of this uh, facility through the weekend, um, thanks to our friends in the uh, school district, um, one of whom live, literally lives nearby and is coming down with their keys to unlock the, the building for us. So. Uh, at this time, we are planning on having a 4 p.m. meeting tomorrow, and if that changes, we'll put out a press release to that effect tomorrow morning. All right, thanks very much for coming, folks. Good night.